Live from Rochester Hills, this is the Time Hunt Borrowed Time Launch Celebration Live Video. And uh, those people that are joining live, uh, I'll try to thank you as you pop on, but um, I, I want to thank everybody who's going to watch this thing. I am excited. It's, uh, it's been an exciting day already. I got up this morning and I went and checked this page. And as you can see, uh, we, are, we are now up and live on uh, Amazon. Hello, Mary Ellen. Thanks for joining. Um, so we are, we are live and we are doing very well. And, I'm, and I am very pleased by that. It's there. It's available. It's what it's supposed to be. So, so yeah, that's, it's been a while since I've had something up on the uh, Amazon page there. And, and I'm very happy to, um, to have that there, to have that there. So um, I'm going to have information at the end uh, about uh, how to win a free copy of Time Hunt Borrowed Time for the people that are joining. That is something I said I would do, and I am a man of my word, so I am going to do that um, at the end here. But first, I'm going to do a reading. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to read uh, two chapters from Time Hunt Borrowed Time. They're relatively small chapters. That's why I'm reading two of them and not one of them. Um, let me set it up a little bit. So Ness Relevant has come home. He's checked his mail. He's gotten a box. Hi, Megan. Um, he's gotten a box in the mail and it's got some strange, shaky handwriting that seems vaguely familiar. He can't figure out what it is. And he opens it up and it's a PDA. And He's, you know, if you remember back, in, in this takes place in 2008, so you remember back in the day when we had PDAs before we had, you know, smartphones. Um, and, hi, Peter. And what's going to happen is, what, what happens is he opens it up and there's this PDA in there and there's a video there and he watches it and it is a video from a friend of his, uh, a, a old college professor who's turn, turned into a mentor called uh, Dr. Francis Bertrand. And uh, in the, in the um, course of watching it, he's telling, he's just told um, Ness that what he holds in his hand is something he's modified. It's not just your normal everyday PDA. It is also a time machine. Hi, Robin. And that's where we start this chapter, the first chapter being chapter four, a small step forward. Tuesday, September 9th, 2008, 6, 21 p.m. I know this is an unbelievable assertion. Dr. Bertrand's voice held a light tone, but I'm not one, but not one I am making unfounded, nor do you have to take it on faith. By the end of this tutorial, this little device will prove its worth to you. Dr. Bertrand had never been a practical joker. That truth prevented Ness from setting the device aside. Only the serious tone the first video made the doctor's assertion even privately, even slightly believable. The device did not appear to house anything particularly mind-blowing. The exterior of the PDA had no extra controls or other features to give away the secret. The burnished case made it appear more like something an executive would use to keep a corporate schedule on track. Not a time machine. Hi, Amy Marie. Um, all right, Doc, Ness muttered, sitting at the table. Show me. First, I need to make clear one of the major limitations of this form of time travel. The act of moving through time is accomplished by retuning the frequencies of the molecules of your body to another point in space-time. This method does successfully take one to another time, but it introduces an instability. This places a limit on how long a traveler can stay in another time, a concept I call borrowed time. For a short jump of a day or even less, this limit is about 24 hours. But the further you jump forward or backward, the shorter the amount of borrowed time. 
A traveler must return to where he began, what I call the home time, or his molecules will destabilize with fatal results. The limit appears to be the birth of the traveler. If one were to travel back to this event, the borrowed time would expire almost instantly. This is sounding less fun all the time, Ness grumbled. How many other ways can this thing kill me? The other important rule is to only touch the time machine you use to travel. Touching another version of the device existing in another time than your home time causes a sudden interspatial shift event. Or to put it more succinctly, your body would implode. I'm sorry I asked, Ness muttered. But enough of the fine print. It's time to take your first trip into time. If you look at the screen, you will see the current date and time at the top. This is your home time, and it will remain static during your travels. Below is a counter showing how long your body needs to recover before attempting your next trip. For long trips, the recovery time is greater, but for a small trip, it can be negligible. Most likely, it currently shows zeros. This number will change when the countdown of your borrowed time to, the, to be the countdown of your borrowed time during your visit to another when. There is a date selector where you can set your target month, day, or year. Below, you can choose the time it, uh, you wish to arrive. As you can see, both are pre-filled with the current values to allow for easy modification. For the purposes of this tutorial, you will be taking a three-hour trip into the future. Add three hours to the current time, and when you are ready, press the launch button. A confirmation screen will appear. Tap yes, and you will be sailing through time. When you're traveling, the button you use to launch yourself into time shifts into your method to return. Once you have recovered from the effects, which can be a trifle disquieting, to be honest, look around a bit before returning to your home time. Just like that, you will become one of the very first time travelers. Ness chuckled at his friend's enthusiastic tone as he changed the time to 9.32 p.m. His thumb, moved, his thumb moved toward the large red button when the doctor's voice stopped him. It is important you find somewhere safe, a space you can be sure will be unoccupied when you arrive, where you won't startle anyone with your sudden appearance. Also make sure you keep a firm grip on the time machine itself. This requires skin contact, and dropping it partway through time transition will create an unfortunate result. Good luck, and have fun. Ness stood and stepped into an open area near the table. He glanced at a clock mounted on the wall. Hi, Kathy. After making sure he had a good hold on the device, he finished his thumb's journey and tapped on the launch button. The second hand on the wall clock no longer traversed the dial. The first indication of anything changing. All the color seeped out of the scene, leaving everything pale and undefined. As his sight finally faded to black, Ness's body came apart molecule by molecule. He experienced a distinct sensation of being poured through a funnel of moving from one place to another. Suddenly, the world snapped into focus again. He found himself coughing, bent over at the waist, trying to simultaneously gulp in oxygen and ignoring the mother of all tickles in his throat, lest he vomit on his carpet. As he gained control of his cough, Ness recognized small bits of upholstery stuffing in his feet. Pulling himself upright, he stared at how drastically his apartment had changed. Hi, Jamie. The clock read half past nine o'clock. Beyond the glass door to his balcony, lights from other buildings in the distance pierced the pitch black night sky. Ness couldn't deny the evidence. He had come forward in time. Still, he hadn't expected the scene that greeted him. His gutted couch sat like a corpse, its interior creating waves of stuffing across this living room. His landscapes had been removed from the wall and tossed aside. The glass and at least one of the frames had been broken. The smaller frames, a collection of photographs he had taken of himself at various locations, were strewn about the floor instead of in their usual place atop his faux mantle. Ness ran to the spare bedroom that served as his darkroom. Supplies had been pulled out of cabinets, their doors left gaping. He sighed with relief. The enlarger still sat safely on its stand in the middle of the room. At least something he owned remained intact. 
Can you come out here? A voice came from the living room. We need to talk. Hi, Laura. Ness tended to be a peaceful man, but having seen the wreckage of his sanctuary, he found himself ready to spill some blood. With clenched fists, he left. There may not have been murder in his eyes, but he intended on at least a thorough beating. Hi, Bob. All ideas of retribution fled from his mind when he saw who had called him. Standing in the middle of of the sea of stuffing stood someone unexpectedly familiar, the same hair, clothing, and face he saw in the mirror. Even though there were obvious differences, like needing a shave and a bloody rip in one sleeve, he had no doubt who faced him. Only a time machine could create this situation. Ness was about to have a face-to-face -face conversation with himself. Chapter 5. Talking to Himself Tuesday, September 9th, 2008, 9.36 p.m. How can there be two of me in this room? Ness thought. A long stretch of silence ensued as Ness inspected his duplicate, looking for some way it could be a scam, but he could not find anything to indicate any kind of falsehood. The partly healed, <laughs> the partly healed scratch on the back of the double's hands confirmed the reality of the situation. Despite himself, Ness looked at the same abrasion on his own hand. The result of scraping against the nail at a crime scene, the two wounds were the same si uh, size, shape, placement, and healing. He finally broke the silence. Okay, so how is this happening? His doppelganger laughed, which sounded slightly odd coming from outside his head. Even so, that only pro provided further confirmation as a former DJ at the college radio station. He was familiar with the true sound of his own voice. Didn't you just get here using a time machine? He raised an eyebrow at him. I hadn't expected to run into myself here. Did you do this? Ness's clenched fist ached. The double shook his head. Hell no, I'm as angry as you are. Glenn, uh, I'm as angry as you are, excuse me. No, Glenn and his boys did this. Confused, Ness asked, If you aren't my future self, where did you come from? Oh, I am from the future, and I'm here to help. His copy grinned. Wait, what? What the hell is going on here? Ness's anger rose again, this time out of frustration. Man, who knew I'd freak out this much? The double muttered. Ness considered the idea of being the butt of some cosmic joke, something of the lines of, what if you met yourself and discovered you're an asshole? But he struggled to get his emotions under control. All right, can you do me a favor and start from the beginning? His doppelganger looked briefly exasperated before acquiescing with a small grin. Sure thing. I keep forgetting I've had a little more time to assimilate things than you have. All right, from my perspective, I did Bertrand's little tutorial trip about 20 hours ago. The trip, in fact, you are starting now. The double pause to see if Ness understood, and Ness nodded. I came here to this. The doppelganger spread his arms, gesturing to the apartment's devastation. And like you, I was incensed. Easy answer, I assume. Go back to my home time. Wait for whoever does this in the next three hours and stop them. Yeah, I had the same idea before you called me back out here. Ness admitted. His copy gave him a lopsided grin. Well, we do tend to think alike. I'm only 20 hours older than you are. Anyway, I find myself facing this stone-faced man called Glenn and two enormous thugs. They were armed and after the PDA. Hi, Cliff. I knew I'd made a mistake in sticking around, waiting for them. In desperation, I ran into the dark room and jumped into time in a, faulty escape, in a faulty attempt to escape. But it didn't work. A tickle in the back of Nessa's mind answered the question, but he wanted to hear it from his slightly older self. Nope. It's all in the concept Bertrand shared of the home time. You are tied to the time you left on this little jaunt in the time stream around 6.30 or so. You have to return there or face the consequences eventually. Realization dawned on Ness with a dreadful certainty. The borrowed time. Exactly. 
No matter what I do, if I want to live beyond my allotted 24 hours, I need to return to the room with the IntelliSys thugs beating on the door. And if I do, it's game over anyway. Okay, I'm following you, but how do we prevent it from happening? His other self gave him a pointed look with eyebrow raised, as if the answer was obvious. By not following me. Or to be more precise, by making different choices. So I need to what? What else could I do against a trio of heavily armed men? Ness thought. Get out of the apartment, the copy responded emphatically. I've had a lot of time to consider my plan, and the most important thing is to get to street level, where you have more room and options. Once you are there, our paths will diverge. And what will happen to you? The sudden concern washing over him surprised Ness. If all goes well, I cease to exist. Ness's eyebrows rose in surprise. I mean, the new future you forge by making different choices should replace this one. I will not die or suffer from the dire effects of my borrowed time expiring. Indeed, this version of us, along with this conversation, would live only in your memory. Man, that's heavy, Ness muttered. Just like college, discussing temporal physics with the doctor in the student center, eh? Ignoring the circumstances, Ness chuckled at the memory. I don't remember it giving me such a headache back then. The double spread his arms. Yeah, it's a little different having some skin in the game. Ness laughed for real. So what else can you tell me? The guy's name is Glenn. He's a little shorter than us with silver hair. I'm pretty sure he's with Antelisys, but he doesn't appear on any company registries. If I had to guess, I'd say he works for Paul Robbins, the director of security, but I can't confirm it. He's likely off book from what I could find out. And the other two? The copy shrugged. Hired muscle, most likely. I don't even know their names. Antelisys seems sleazy to me, and I'm surprised Dr. Batron would even work for them. Undisclosed, undisclosed sources of funding, which means military or some other secretive arm of the government. Anyone who so much as looks at their building has to sign an NDA. I wouldn't trust anyone from there with my piggy bank, much less a time machine. You've been busy. Since I have no avenue of escape, I've learned what I could to pass on to you. And that? Ness pointed to the bloody tear in the copy's shirt. The copy looked at his arm and the brownish stains on the blue material. I got too close to Glenn and his boys at one point. I had to get away and ran into something. A pounding sound grew in volume and the copy looked at the door. He pulled his PDA from a pocket and tapped on the screen before looking at Ness again. Apparently Glenn and his boys are coming back for round two. They undoubtedly left some surveillance behind. You'd best be getting back yourself. Keep a sharp eye on your borrowed time. Believe me, it goes faster than you would imagine. And find Bertrand. He can tell you more about the players than I can. The copy gave him a jaunty wave and grinned. Be seeing you. He tapped on his screen, then vanished. The door burst open, and the intruders surprised Ness with the ferocity of their entrance. A thin man with gray hair and dead eyes regarded Ness with a feral grin. Ness pulled the PDA out of his pocket and thumbed the power button. At the side of the device, Glenn's sneer grew and his gun aimed at Ness's forehead. A quick tap on the screen launched his trip back home, back to his home time, three hours earlier. The last thing he saw before his sight faded was the flash from the muzzle. And that is the excerpt of Time Hunt Borrowed Time for you. So... I've got uh, some instructions on the giveaway. So I promised the giveaway. So, um, uh, hi, Ken. Glad you finally uh, were able to comment. So what I'd like you to do, if you haven't already commented, um, please do. Because what I'm going to do is I've got a random number generator on my phone. And I'm going to add up how many people have commented on this video. And I will pick a number um, off the random number generator. And who? Ever that is, you are going to get a free copy of Time Hunt Borrowed Time in either EPUB or Mobi format, whichever one you want. So I will, after the video, I, I'm not going to try to count all that 
stuff here on, on the video, that would be stupid. Um, <laughs> and I try not to be stupid on a live video, uh, even though I have been, but not today. Today is not that day. So, um, so then what I'll do is I will contact the lucky winner and, and let them know. And I'll also maybe put on a comment on this or I'll post it to Facebook in some way, shape or form. So all of you can congratulate the lucky, lucky individual. But I wanted to show you one other thing in regards to this novel in regards to the launch of this novel. And that is on the web or accessible on the web page. So let me switch to that. And so this is penslinger.com. This is my web page. And I'm on, if I go to the Time Hunt page, which is under Novels Time Hunt here. And I just got basic descriptions and I got links to the book. But what I do have down here is a way to take a deeper dive. And that is, and that takes you to the Archivos story mapping software. This is what uh, Dave uh, Robison has been working on. It's his brainchild. And what I've done here is I've already got it up here is I've set up what is called a story setting for time hunt borrowed time here. And you can see a number of things I've got. They got featured story elements, but you can see that we've got the characters and we've got the regions and locations and we got a bunch of events. I put one event in for each chapter and then the PDA. That's basically how I envisioned the PDA looking. And you've got a couple cool elements here. You've got the story web. So if you want to see like who are the primary characters, you'll see when this thing pops up, there is a bunch of stuff to see there. But we can filter it down and maybe I just want to see all my characters, my primary characters. So we can see there we've got Paul Robbins and Dr. Bertrand and Ness Relevant and this person named Angie. Uh, you'll learn more about her when you read the book. We got Glenn and the things here. And the, those, these are the big thugs that came in with Glenn. And so you can just see things here. You can kind of rearrange them to make it more readable. Um, but you can you can dive deeper. If I want to, you know, dive into Glenn a little bit here, I can double click on him. And, and then I can see the whole thing with Glenn. As you can see, he's in a lot of events and, and, and he's connected to, uh, to Ness. And so there's some cool stuff there. Um, we got the living map and I, this is, might be my favorite, my favorite feature because, you know, this takes place in the Metro Detroit area where I live and I have, places in mind for everything, even if it's not a real place necessarily, um, or real thing necessarily, I have places for things. So, uh, this is a cool feature because it allows me to, uh, take things like Waterford Oaks, which is an actual water park here. And I can show where it is on the map. We've got Dr. Bertrand's house here. We've got Intellisys's office. Uh, over here, we've got Madison Mall, um, and then down here, we've got Nessa's apartment, and we've got the Detroit Public Library. So these are all events in the book, and you can see where they land here on this map of Metro Detroit. And uh, you can, you know, like if I want to, what's Pontiac Station, I can click on it and I can get to here. I can see a more close up map of the area there where the station is, along with um you know, some description about it and, and, you know, I put a link on there to the actual thing. So, so there's some cool stuff there that you can see. And then if you want to dive into the timeline a little bit, if you want to kind of see it, cause you know, this is a time travel novel. There's lots of, you know, going back and forth. You can actually look at the entire timeline of the novels. You can see we got stuff going on back here in the 1980s. And if I scroll forward a bit uh, to the 2008, time frame we've got a number of things happening here and you can zoom in and and you know obviously uh, most of this is happening in a relatively close time frame so you you might need to zoom in a bit it's uh, it's not it's not scrolling for me for some reason but you know the archivos thing is really cool and so uh if you're into, you know you could do it beforehand i don't have a lot of the plot in here and i did that kind of on purpose because i didn't want it to be spoilery if you want got on here and got looking around I didn't want it super spoil spoilery, so I didn't get into a lot of of um, information as far as on the plot of it at all. Hey Noah, hey Jillian, I see that uh, I got a few people here. Okay, cool. Um, 
so so that's that's what I wanted to share with you today. I'm at 25 minutes. So that's I think that's good. So once again, in case you come in like Noah and Jillian did while I was while I was doing other things, uh, please leave a comment of any kind on this video between now and when I end the live video. So. Uh, Jillian, you might want to get going, but um, and, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a uh, uh, I'm going to use a random number generator. I'm going to count up how many people commented, uh, and I will use a random number generator after the video is over. Uh, I will pick out the lucky person based upon the number, and it's just going to be order of I'll count. You know, if you were the third person to leave a comment, you'll be number three. That's how it's going to work. And then I will if if I do. Number three, and it's you, I will contact you offline, and um, you can tell me what format you want, EPUB or Mobi. Um, uh, Mobi is what Kindle uses, all right? So you can use a Kindle app or whatever, and EPUB is what, like, Kobo and a lot of other e-readers use. Uh, so, um, so, yeah, that's it. I want to thank everybody for swinging by, whether they stuck around for the whole thing or not. I want to thank everybody that watches this video um, on Facebook after the fact, on YouTube after the fact, because I will be getting it up in both places. I want to thank everybody that buys the book. I already know that we've got people that are buying it because I'm watching the sales rank and, and it's it's moving and that's cool. Um, and I just want to thank everybody for supporting me on this. This is this is a a major thing for me to do. Uh, it's not the first one I've done, but it's been a long, long time, and uh, I'm excited to kind of have this back out in the wild. And uh, for those of you that pick up the book and read it, I hope you really, really like it. Um, but that's uh, that's all I have for you today. So I'm going to sign off now. Have a great day. And uh, until next time, be seeing you. <laughs>